Greetings, Guyana. Good evening. And welcome to another version of A Changing Guyana, where the change you seek begins with you. This evening, I have a special guest here with you, with me. And I'd like to share uh, his background and some of his information with you. My special guest this evening is Dr. Richard Van West Charles. Dr. Richard Van West Charles graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree from Man McMaster University in Ontario, Ontario, Canada in 1973, after which he began studying medicine at the University of the West Indies, where he completed his preclinical science and then proceeded to the University of Havana to complete his clinical years, graduating with a Doctor of Medicine in 1979. He also has a certificate in health economics from the University of Aberdeen and a certificate in the management of social development programs from the Inter-American Development Bank. He later completed his postgraduate studies in public health at the University of Michigan, where he earned his master's of public health. He worked at the Georgetown Hospital in the Department of Medicine for two years, after which he held the portfolio of senior minister of health from 1980 to 1985. During this period, he also held the portfolios of water, housing, and environment, along with that of health. In 1986, he then held the portfolio of medical education, food policy, and the environment. He led a team charged with responsibility for the development of the curriculum of the medical school of the University of Guyana. He also was chairman of the Civil Defense, Defense Commission and chairman of bilateral commissions with Cuba and East Germany. At the international level, he served as a member of the Executive Committee of PAHO WHO and the WHO Executive Board, and Chairman of the Conference of Ministers of Health of CARICOM and the Commonwealth. He worked in private practice for a number of years. For over 20 years, he worked with the World Health Organization in a number of countries and at the regional headquarters in Washington, D.C. He was Program Officer for the Eastern Caribbean and later served as the County Representative for, the, for a number of countries and area manager for knowledge, for knowledge management, with responsibility for bioethics and research. He later served as advisor and partnerships with international financial institutions with PAHO WHO. He has served a number of boards related with health development. He also served as the vice president of academic affairs and academic dean with St. Helen University School of Medicine in St. Lucia. Currently, he is the managing director of the Guyana Water Incorporated, GWI. Dr. Van West Charles, good evening and thank you for being with me this evening. Good evening, Andy. Thanks. It's good to be here. Now, I guess my first question is, why is a physician running so running a GWI? <clears throat> I guess I understand, looking at your background, that is pretty extensive, but why is a physician running GWI? Well, uh, GWI's mission speaks to the issue of water, and sanitation. I'm a public health specialist, um, and over the years, that's my postgraduate um, qualifications, and over, my, over the years as minister and working with PAHO WHO, um, one of my responsibilities at a programmatic level has always been water and sanitation. So when I was the program officer for the Eastern Caribbean, in addition to the other programs, water and sanitation was always one of the programs. As I was the country representative in Jamaica, covering Bermuda and the Cayman Islands, as I was representative in the Bahamas, covering Bahamas and Turks, I also had a program which is water and sanitation. So my trajectory, really, um, water and sanitation is not new to me. Um, as you heard, as a minister, I, I was also responsible for water in Guyana. I see, I see. Well, I know I said uh, I presented a short bio, but in addition to the bio, I, I actually overlooked the fact that you are the son-in-law of the Guyana's first executive vice president and first prime minister. First executive president. Executive president, my apologies, and, and first prime minister. Uh, Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham. That's right. Uh, I know tonight's call, in tonight's show we're going to have, the, uh, we're going to provide you the opportunity to call in and ask Dr. Uh, Van Best Charles questions uh, that you have concerning GWI, 
or anything else uh, that concerns you that you think he might have the answer to. I know uh, GWI has just instituted a uh, monthly fixed charge of $250. Can you share with the public what that fixed charge is about? Right. So, um, as a matter of fact, that was introduced on the 1st of October this month. Uh, that was af introduced after the Public Utilities Commission agreed with the proposal which we submitted to them over a series of meetings. Uh, that fixed charge basically seeks to address the infrastructure that we have. Um, we've got, for example, in Georgetown, a very aged infrastructure. Um, and many people are witnessing the occurrences of breakages, for example, in the Sinton Road, etc., because the cast iron pipes are very brittle. So we made the case, and it's not something that is uh, new to water utilities. Most of the other water utilities uh, in the Caribbean and beyond the Caribbean do uh, have a fixed charge that addresses the maintenance and replacement of the infrastructure. We've never had that. And so the 250 would be for the first year, $250. And after that, at the end of uh, September 2019, it then goes to $500. Now that seeks to uh, replace the, uh, especially the transmission lines, um, give additional lines also, because as more and more citizens acquire lots for housing, etc. The network has to be expanded. So uh, part of the process, you know, this is a state company. This is the people's company. Uh, and so um, we've made the case and the Public Utilities Commission has concurred. And that would uh, make a tremendous impact in terms of um, bringing some stability to the uh, network, uh, the distribution met network in particular. And we will be able to say, in essence, where the works are to be done on an annual basis. So the customers will be able to see how the fixed charge is going to be applied in terms of the distribution system. Oh, actually, thank you. Uh, have you made concessions uh, for seniors or there are no concessions to seniors? Yes, seniors, um, there is no application of the fixed charge to the seniors. And uh, the seniors, um, we have estimated if the senior is living by himself or herself, uh, the consumption of about four black tanks um, will, per month will be a monthly cost of $741. If, however, the senior, the pensioner, is living with uh, relatives, that consumption will rise. All seniors will be metered, so anything above the consumption of four black tanks will then attract a different rate. And so, that would be seen on the bill, etc. So, it's, we, we, we're seeking to be fair, uh, and we want to be ensured that the seniors get a good rate. Um, but if they're living with relatives, uh, after the use of the four black tanks on a monthly basis, it then attracts another rate, and all of these uh, seniors will be metered. I see. I see. Again, uh, if anyone out there has any questions, feel free to, uh, feel free to call in the show. Uh, you, the number should be uh, on the screen. Um, I'll be willing to uh, answer whatever questions you but might have. But if I may make a, another point, um, metering is not a punitive uh, tool. It's a tool that helps us and helps the citizens to have a better quality of service. Uh, it seeks to uh, conserve. It seeks to, and it lends itself to improvement of the pressure within the system. And it also helps the utility with greater efficiency. I see. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Because again, the name of this show is The Change in Guyana. 
And we definitely want to see a lot of changes uh, in, in several aspects of our lives. But as you just said, sometimes we have to pay for those changes. Um, I know that your organization uh, has received a CDB loan. Can you tell us how that loan will be allocated? Well, it's, it was approved by the board. Um, we haven't received the funds as yet, but it will be addressing a number of areas, uh, certainly in Region 1, um, uh, further improvements to Mabaruma as a priority. In Region 2, um, a treatment plant and the improvement of the system from uh, Walton Hall to Charity. In Region 3, um, improvements of the system in Leg 1 and Wakanam. Right? In uh, Region 4, we are going to be doing a feasibility study looking at the Hope Canal to see how best we can use that body of water um, to serve uh, the coastal plain and, and because there's a large body of water there. Uh, in Region 6, um, we're going to have a water treatment plant at Tain and at Bushla. Um, also in Region 8, Madia, we're going to have improvements for the Salbura Creek. I should say, however, that we may have a greater impact with this, lo this loan because uh, due to some new technology which we recently discovered, we, two of our engineers uh, recently visited Albany, New York. And so we found a bit more uh, new, well, it's not that new, but it would give us greater cost effectiveness um, in terms of treating the water. We basically treat water for two principal things in Guyana, iron and hydrogen sulfide. And so the experience which we have seen in, um, I, I think we sent up Mr. Jor from the board and Mr. Sheko, they both are engineers, um, and they've recommended the technology. Um, and we are actually going to be doing a project, a pilot project with it very soon, within this month. Um, it will be less costly to treat the water than we are presently doing and we will have a greater impact with, with the loan. But what I've just told you, as defined in this presentation, that's where we are, but we are sure that we can have a greater impact using a different approach. I see, I see. Similarly, uh, you just received some funds from WHO. Uh, how would those funds be allocated? Well, that's, um, we've been having some small grants from uh, the office here. We just completed the system at Yorong Paru, and this uh, new grant will address um, Sand Creek in Region 9. And so that will help uh, significantly. I see, I see. Um, I know there are steps may being taken to treat uh, the water in several different areas. Anything happening within the Georgetown area? Well, um, out of the uh, IDB uh, European loan, which we have, um, in which we are addressing um, treatment plant in Region 6 at Chitanka, and uh, in Region 4 at Diamond, and Region 3 at IFLA, um, together with another component which really addresses Shelter Belt, which is in Georgetown. Shelter Belt is a rather complex plant, and um, we are going to be having significant improvements in um, the water quality. The water quality is very good right now in Georgetown, but additionally, um, we are hoping to have a better system using less chemicals in the treatment uh, of the water here in Georgetown. Um, most, most European countries use a minimal amount of chemicals in their treatment processes, um, and we feel that is um, 
a good thing to do, at the same time not compromising water quality in any way. I see, I see. I know in many countries, uh, the water management facilities are proud of the fact that their water is drinkable. Um, are we there, or how soon do you expect us to get there? We're there, we're there in most parts of the country. Um, in regions 1, 7, 8, and 9, um, we do, we, I can't say we are there as yet, because most of the water available, it's either from rain or um, other surface water sources, such as creeks, rivers, etc. Um, as you would have witnessed in Port Kaituma, um, we were taking water from a river. When we tested it, the mercury levels were high. However, um, we've sought to address that, and probably within another two weeks, Kaituma will have groundwater treated and available to them. So that is going to be a very important um, movement in Oranok, in Region 1 also. Um, it's a new well there, and the water will be treated, and they will be able to drink. And in Mabaruma itself, together with Barbina and Wanaina, the water will be uh, treated also. So we are moving in different parts of Region 9, etc. Right now in Lethem, um, what is uh, goes through a disinfection process. But there are a number of smaller wells and smaller villages that we would have to look at to tighten that system. I would say we, of the 24 treatment plants across the coast, um, all are, bi are microbiologically safe. We do have, in some cases, um, high iron, but we have introduced a product which sequesters the iron. Um, if you looked at Region 2, it's one of the areas in Guyana that has probably the highest level of iron. And we've had to, I mean, it, it was obviously an issue for the residents there, um, staining their clothing, staining their porcelain, staining their tiles, etc. So we have invested in the use of a product called Sequest, which sequesters the iron and um, permits the water to be crystal clear. Um, however, what we've got to do now is to flush the lines with a higher uh, re regularity than normally we would have done because this product begins now to clean the lines. So that is um, going to make a, it is making a significant difference in a number of areas along the coast, Bachelor's Adventure, LBI, uh, Clonbrook, in Region 6 at Edinburgh, in Ithaca. Um, so it's, it's, it's making a difference at the quality of water. Um, with our laboratory, um, our staff are aggressive in moving out, sampling the water. Um, we have set up a few mini labs, and we're hoping with the support from the government of Guyana next year, we will be putting another five mini labs around. So we are high on the issue of water quality. Um, and you ask your first question, why would a physician? Exactly that. As a physician heading the water quality, I have to ensure that the, the water utility to ensure that the quality of water. Professionally, I have to do that to ensure that the quality of water that we, we distribute is of a high nature. I think um, the water treatment processes have been tightened significantly. Uh, we're training staff more and more in this area. Thank you, thank you. Now, with all the work that you have uh, ongoing throughout Guyana, uh, is there a need for additional uh, staff, any specific skill set you're looking for? Well, I would say because water treatment is critical, um, that's important. Um, when I took over GWI, um, we had no drilling capability. All of the wells had to be outsourced and are still being outsourced. 
We are hoping next year, with the support of government, to acquire two, two rigs, um, one for the coastal plain and the other for the hinterland. Um, there's a difference because to access water in the hinterland, you've got to go through a lot of rock. Um, the experience that our staff are presently going to get um, from the collaboration between the Brazilian Army and ourselves right now, which is taking place right now in Lethem, um, will assist us significantly, but we'll have to purchase some equipment because what happened previously is that we would drill in the blind. So I think that is one of the things. The other thing is you cannot run uh, an efficient utility with all of your engineers at a bachelor's level. Um, we have to upgrade. We are now upgrading. We recently sent two engineers to England. Um, an engineer just returned from India. Um, yes, and last week another engineer returned from Japan. Um, one or two of the engineers are doing their masters at Delft University. Um, so we, you've got to invest in the engineers. Um, staff we doing um, using AutoCAD the mapping of our meters, mapping of our pumps, etc. So the IT, the, the 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 IT component also is going to be important for us. I see. I see. Um, do you see? Do you foresee a nexus between the oil and gas sector and GWI? And, and how do you see the two bridging? Or, or what, is, what important role do you see this oil and gas sector having on GWI and its water quality? Well, uh, let's start from the point of view of increased demand. Obviously, with oil and gas by 2021, more people are going to be here. Um, our Guyanese who are in the diaspora, they are going to return. Um, foreigners are going to be coming. <laughs> they are coming already. Um, they're going to be looking for, for the, the companies, for housing and different things. So that signals an increase in demand for both water and sanitation services. Um, however, also, um, the ships that are coming, they, they bring water, ballast water. Um, it's going to be important for us to start thinking of how do we treat that ballast water. Um, their experiences in other countries um, of some of the negative uh, effects of that because uh, many of those countries were not thinking upstream. Um, we have already sent, uh, I think, um, earlier this year, two of our staff from the Water Quality Department went to a conference uh, in Texas dealing with water and the oil and gas industry. So um, we are seeking to more or less um, equip ourselves with more and more knowledge and have us in a, a level of preparedness. It seems as though we are, okay. Okay, Don, thank you. Um, now, do you foresee, uh, if there's a young person uh, looking to get into if, if there's a young person looking to get into GWI, what, what steps can that person take to uh, get a job at GW, GWI? Well, the process is uh, an application through the um, Human Resource Department. Um, we have some specific needs. We're looking for engineers. Um, but obviously, we have to invest in the training of the engineers. We've got to, water engineering is not similar to civil, etc. So we have to spend some time in training the engineers. IT people, we, we are looking for IT um, staff. So um, in the different areas of water treatment, um, the engineering, engineering is, is key to us. Um, those are the areas um, in particular and there are other ancill ancillary skills which we require, you know. I see, I see. Well, as I said to you, uh, the public at large, 
there are a lot of changes coming to Guyana. And my hope is that you can see the information being shared with you tonight and take positive action to be part of this change. Now, a lot of the changes that you seek begins with you, as I've said many times, and I'll continue to say that. I can bring you the information, but you would actually have to take action and place yourself in a position where you can be part of that change that you're looking for. Dr. Uh, Richard Van West Charles, I would like to thank you very much for coming out tonight and sharing your time with us. And again, we still have some time on the clock, so call us out there. If you have questions for, for the doctor, please feel free to give us a call. Um, we're, we're here to answer any question that you might have, specifically uh, on uh, water, but if you have any additional questions for Dr. Uh, Van West Charles, he'll be happy to take them. Uh, before we, t we leave, I also want to say that next week, our guest will be uh, Mike Singh, who is a Guyanese that's globally respected for his investment background, as well as, as his telecommunications background. He has lived throughout the world, but particularly in Dubai, and he has a vast wealth of knowledge where oil and gas is concerned. So I, I hope that you will tune in next week. If you have questions for us that you couldn't get answered tonight, you weren't able to call in, you can uh, send us a message at facebook.com backslash a-M-E-S-G-U-Y-A-N-A, -E and we'll be happy to answer any question that you might have. You can also call me directly at 683-4366, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Again, this is a weekly show here on Safe TV Channel 2, and I urge you to tune in every Wednesday at 8, and hope that we will continue seeing you as part of this show. This, my hope is that this is a this will be a family-oriented show. And the questions that you have, again, don't be afraid to ask them because somebody else might have the same question. And your question might be able to get them the answer that they're seeking. Uh, Dr. Uh, Van Rest Charles, do you have anything else you'd like to share with us this evening? Well, I think um, in terms of the government's commitment to equity of access, to potable water. Somebody's calling it. Good evening. You're on the way here with Dr. Van West Charles and Andrew Austin in a change in Guyana. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'm just calling as a citizen of Guyana to ask Dr. Van West Charles if you can share some information about the new tariffs that have been implemented, how is that going to impact across the country, who will be, how, it, how it's um, approved to be implemented over a year or two periods, so you can, the Guyanese people can have a little more information into the insight, into how this would affect in what particular area that is affected. Uh, Carla, can you give us your first name and the area you're calling from? I'm calling from Georgetown, Guyana. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Kola. Um, the uh, request made by GWI to the Public Utilities Commission uh, basically was directed to a harmonization of rates. There was a different rate for the urban versus the rural populations. But when we looked at the inputs for the treatment of water, it's all the same. The electricity costs are the same. The chemical costs are the same. The salaries of staff, they're all the same. So what we requested is an approach to harmonize. For example, in Georgetown, you're paying about $112 per meter cube of water. Uh, and previously, prior to October 1 of this year, um, you paid about $60, 60, $60 per meter cube in the rural communities. Now, what has happened now, the PUC has sort of proposed a gradual increase um, for this year from 1st of October 2018 to 
September of 2019, um, it moves from 60 to around 86. And then after 2019, it then harmonizes with the urban area. The fixed charge, as I explained earlier, um, will be, once you're a customer, you have to pay the fixed charge. Because that's really helping us to move to a different level in terms of the infrastructure, uh, the wholesomeness of the infrastructure to provide a better quality and better access um, to the citizens. The pensioners um, will be um, one at set of $741 per month based on the consumption of 10 meter cube. I think it's important to note that the VAT that, uh, that was introduced earlier this year, um, the fixed charge does not attract the VAT. What attracts the VAT is the consumption of water. Now, we, we have a number of, meet, of customers that are metered and some are unmetered. So where we are moving very quickly is to meter as many customers so that there is fairness in the system, um, looking at our consumption and conserving so you have a better service. Okay. So I was saying to you earlier, um, because of the issue of equity of access, um, presently uh, under the project which I mentioned with Good evening. You're on the air with Dr. Van West Charles and Andrew Austin. Hello, good evening. May I speak to Dale, please? I'm sorry. Right. So um, you're going to be seeing, for example, as we speak, a new well has been uh, drilled in, in, the, in a, an advanced stage in Port Morant, um, the treatment plant in Shitanka. Um, in Port Droin and uh, Westminster in Region 3, together with Virgin Nugent. Um, there are going to be three new wells before the end of the year. In Campbelltown in Region 8, there's going to be a, a well. In Tasserin, there's going to be a well. And that's in Region 7 and Kamwata. Um, also through the BNTF, the Basic Needs Trust Fund, um, we are going to um, sort of replace three wells. One is at Barometer, the other one is at Canal Bank, and the other one is at number 58 in Mabura Road. There are some new wells which have just been completed at Wyaling and Chinawing and also Yorumparu, which I, I mentioned earlier. Um, and I mentioned the issue with uh, Port Kaitum in Region 1. So we, um, seeking, we are seeking to make a significant impact in improving access, and that's the government's commitment. Um, prior to taking up the reins of government, that was uh, the government's commitment. And the president speaks to the issue of equity between the hinterland regions and the coastal regions. So that has, has to be a signal to us that we have to ensure that that happens. And with the support of government, we have been making that happen um, in a number of areas. So, um, and it's not simply access, access to quality water. So the testing of the water, um, we are not only looking at access at the homes, we are presently looking at access to in schools. Um, we've tested uh, with, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and the Regional Democratic Councils, um, all of the schools, for example, in Georgetown. Um, we've, we have completed a number of schools in Region 3, in Region 10, in Region 2, uh, region 6. So we are moving aggressively um, to look at these areas. I see. Thank you, Doc. Well, again, let me thank you for joining us this evening. 
my plan for the upcoming uh, weeks is to invite other government agent, uh, agencies uh, heads to join me in this show so that they can share similar information with you. Again, thank you for joining us. And I have to again say thank you very much, Dr. Van West Charles, for joining me this evening on A Changing Diana, where the change you seek begins with you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Good night. <laughs>